name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to this transferred solemnity of the Annunciation of the Lord to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Pilgrims here in church, and those joining us online at home. And it's a particular joy to welcome the Dean of Norwich, the Very Reverend Andrew Braddock, as our preacher this morning. A warm welcome to you, Father, to this place of pilgrimage. Dear friends, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred and paschal mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for mercy. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as, as your followers. Christe, Christe, eleison. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Kyrie, Kyrie, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary. Grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz and said, Ask the Lord your God for a sign for yourself, coming either from the depths of Sheol or from the heights above. No, Ahaz answered, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then he said, Listen now, house of David, are you not satisfied with trying the patience of men without trying the patience of my God too? The Lord himself, therefore, will give you a sign. It is this. The maiden is with child and will soon give birth to a son whom she will call Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. Here I am, O Lord, to do your will. Here I am, O Lord, to do your will. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim, instead here am I. Here I am, O Lord, to do your will. In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law, in the depth of my heart. Here I am, O Lord, to do your will. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed, you know it, O Lord. Here I am, O Lord, to do your will. I have not hidden your justice in my heart, but declared your faithful help. I have not hidden your love and your truth from the great assembly. Here I am, O Lord, to do your will. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Bull's blood and goat's blood are useless for taking away sins, and this is what Christ said on coming into the world. You who wanted no sacrifice or oblation prepared a body for me. You took no pleasure in holocausts or sacrifices for sin. Then I said, just as I was commanded in the scroll of the book, God, here I am, I am coming to obey your will. Notice that he says first, you did not want what the law lays down as the things to be offered, that is, the sacrifices, the oblations, the holocausts, and the sacrifices for sin, and you took no pleasure in them. And then he says, here I am. I am coming to obey your will. He is abolishing the first sort to replace it with the second. And this will was for us to be made holy, by the offering of his body made once and for all by Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
and dwelt among us. To all who received him he gave the power to become children of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favoured, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favour. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son, and she whom people call barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Faithful God, take my spoken words, may they be true to your written word, and lead us all afresh to Christ, your living word. Amen. It's very good to be with you all as we celebrate this Feast of the Annunciation. Father Kevin, thank you for your kind words of welcome and for the invitation to be here. And I also bring the greetings of Norwich Cathedral to the shrine of Our Lady here at Walsingham. The Gospel reading that we've just heard, that wonderful story of the angel Gabriel coming to Mary, telling her that she is to be the mother of our Lord and Saviour, is one of the most familiar Gospels to us, not only because we read it today on the Feast of the Annunciation, but because it's made so familiar to us as we celebrate Advent and Christmas. And I want to explore that reading with you this morning, not only for what it has to tell us about the purposes of God, not only for what it has to tell us about Mary's obedience and response to God's word, but because it also has much to tell us 
as Christians ourselves about the life of prayer and about how we engage with God's call in our own lives. In particular, this encounter between the angel and Mary can teach us three things about our own life of prayer and discipleship. It speaks, first of all, of prayer as a meeting point between heaven and earth. It speaks, secondly, of prayer as a creative struggle as we seek to follow the way of Christ in the midst of the world. And then it speaks of prayer as the place of attentive change and personal transformation. That's what we see happening in Mary, and it's also our own call as well. So let me say just a little bit about those three themes. First of all, prayer as a meeting point between the life of heaven and the life of earth. We see that, of course, in the Annunciation as Gabriel comes from heaven, from the presence of God, to disclose to Mary that she is called to be the mother of our Lord. In that encounter in Nazareth, heaven and earth draw close to one another. Gabriel engages with Mary. Mary responds to the angel Gabriel. It is a meeting point between heaven and earth. The great poet Tennyson said of prayer that it is the golden chain that binds heaven and earth. I think that's a beautiful image for our prayer within which each prayer we offer, not least in the Eucharist, forges another chain in that link between the life of heaven and earth. Mary encounters the angel. The angel comes to Mary, and suddenly a new touching place between heaven and earth is made. And indeed, of course, in Mary, the great touching place between heaven and earth is announced in the child that she will carry in her womb. And so, like Mary, in our own lives of prayer and worship, we too are called to those touching places between heaven and earth. We too are called to help forge another chain in that golden chain of prayer that binds together heaven and earth. But then secondly, we see in this encounter prayer as creative struggle. We're told that Mary's immediate response to the angel's message is not to say, yes, let it be to me according to your will, but rather that she is afraid and perplexed. She can't begin to work out in her mind how this will be. In fact, that's what she asks the angel. How shall this be? How can this be? Since I am a virgin. She hears the message that she is the one who will work with God to begin a new act in God's unfolding drama of salvation. Yes, there is good news here. But how? But how? How can this be since I am a virgin? She struggles to make sense of the good news that she is given. In fact, she might well have thought, is this going to be good news, at least for me? What will it mean for my betrothal to Joseph? What will it mean for the future we had planned? What will it mean for the way that people think about me? for my family and my friends. How can this be? And so at this touching place 
between heaven and earth. In the encounter between Mary and Gabriel, there is a creative struggle to make sense of what will be. And I think if we're honest, in our own lives of prayer and intercession as well, there will be times of creative struggle. We are conscious of the world God longs to bring in, the new creation of justice and joy and peace and truth. But we know that we continue to live in the midst of a fallen world. In our prayers and intercessions, we will pray for the coming of the kingdom, as we do every time we say the Lord's Prayer. And yet we are so conscious of all those places where the kingdom is not yet and seems so very far away, not least in the Holy Land itself. And sometimes we faithfully pray and we pray and we pray and we wonder just what God is up to. Why is there no solution in sight to the war in Ukraine? Why is Gaza and Israel and the West Bank continuing to be so troubled and full of conflict when we are faithfully praying for peace and justice and reconciliation to come? An honest prayer, like the prayers of the Psalms, holds those things in tension. We echo Mary's question, how can these things be? And yet Christian tradition and practice and experience tell us that even in the midst of those struggles, prayer, faithful prayer, is still making a difference in God's way of leading the world towards God's kingdom. The late Archbishop Desmond Tutu tells the story of how in the darkest days of the struggle against apartheid in South Africa, when it seemed as if nothing would ever change, it was prayer. It was prayer that kept people hopeful. People in South Africa in prison, fearful of their own lives and their future, knew that countless thousands, tens of thousands around the world were praying for them. And even when nothing seemed to change, even when the darkness seemed to be getting greater, the light of prayer sustained them in the darkness. Desmond Tutu said, it was prayer that kept us going. We felt the love and the reality of being held in the prayer of our fellow Christians around the world. That's what kept us going and enabled us, finally, to move from darkness to light. Prayer as standing in that place of creative struggle, but prayer, faithful prayer, even in the darkest times, continuing to make a difference. Prayer always does. Mary, even as she questions, how shall this be, is standing in that place of faithful struggle, faithful, open, yearning for God's way. And then finally, that prayer leading to a place of personal growth and transformation, prayer as attentiveness to God's will in our lives. I love that quote from C.S. Lewis, who when asked why did he pray, said, I don't pray in order to change God's mind, I pray because it changes me. I pray because it changes me. That is such a crucial insight into the life of prayer. If we're not careful, our prayers and intercessions can sometimes seem as if we're building up a great wish list or a to-do list of things that we wish God would sort out and do. 
But prayer is actually more about listening, listening for God's word in our lives and being changed by that than it is simply asking for God to do things. I'm struck again in our gospel reading this morning that most of the time in that encounter between Mary and Gabriel, Mary is listening. In the gospel reading, it's the angel Gabriel who does most of the talking. Mary has her questions, but most of all, she is attentive. When she asks, how shall this be? She makes space to receive the answer, to discern what will be, to hear of how the Holy Spirit will overshadow her and God will be at work. In the same way, our own life of prayer is a call to be attentive, to listen to the stirrings of God, to be attentive to his presence in and around us, to be listening for his voice. And in that listening, to have our own horizons changed, transformed, renewed, our own sense of direction changed, transformed, renewed, as it was for Mary, as she gave time to be attentive. And out of that attentiveness became obedient to the will of God. Let it be to me according to your word. So to pray with Mary, to pray according to her example, is to see prayer as that meeting point between heaven and earth, the golden chain binding both together. It is to see prayer as the place of creative struggle, where we bring the world as it is and our longings for the world that God wants it to be, and we hold that in creative tension. And then not least, prayer as the place of attentiveness, and out of attentiveness, personal transformation, that we may be renewed by God's Spirit, that we may too become places full of the Spirit's life, the life of the risen Christ, dwelling in us and leading us day by day in the way of his kingdom. So on this Feast of the Annunciation, as we give thanks for Mary, may she be a model to us of the life of prayer, that prayer which in the end is gathered up in the great prayer and intercession that Christ, our risen High Priest, ever lives to make for us, our risen Lord, who even now is holding us in his prayer and intercession before our Heavenly Father. To him be glory now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, on this day the Father made our salvation known to Mary by the message of an angel, filled with confidence. Let us pray. You chose the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your son. Have mercy on all who wait for your redemption. Give us the grace to trust your promises and to obey your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Through your angel Gabriel, you brought a message of peace and joy to Mary. Give to the world the joy and peace of salvation. Inspire the hearts of men and women everywhere to build a world where security rests on trust rather than threats. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By the consent of your handmaid and the power of the Holy Spirit, your word came to dwell among us. Bless the life, work, and witness of this holy place and all who gather here in pilgrimage. Open our hearts to receive Christ as Mary received him. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You look with compassion on the lowly and fill the hungry with good things. Encourage the downhearted Help all those in need and comfort those near death. May all who come here in distress or need know the power of Christ to sustain them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. To you, O God, nothing is impossible, and you alone do marvelous things. Hear us as we pray for those who have gone before us especially for Alfred Hope Patton, priest, and all those whose vision restored this place. Save us with them and bring us on the last day into your glorious kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us ask Our Lady of Walsingham to join her prayers to us as we say. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Grant, O Lord, that by the riches of your grace, we may grow up into him who unites our life to yours, even he who is the firstborn of all creation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The tradition at the shrine is on this solemnity to bless the guardian's candle, which burns perpetually at the guardian's altar, which is the altar of the Annunciation on the other side of the Holy House. As we light this candle, we pray for the work of the guardians, and we pray, too, for the work of this holy place. Blessed are you, Father and creator of all things, you sent your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to take our flesh upon him and to be born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Bless this light, that it may be a sign of his presence to all who enter this holy place. May they rejoice with Mary at the Annunciation and reflect the light of Christ in their lives. We ask this in the name of him who is the light of the world, Jesus Christ, 
your risen Son and our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And also Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
mercy, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, dear friends, as my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We pray the Lord accept the sacrifice your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and our good of all his holy church. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering, so that she who is aware that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son, May rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men and for men's sake by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. Lovingly she bore him in her immaculate womb that the promises to the children of Israel might come about, and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him the hosts of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs, in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit 
Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon this oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grants that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Pope Francis, Martin our Bishop, Graham Bishop of this diocese, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
always heard of God in love, and always seen as a woman in love. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, so that I will be God's of Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Keep me safe for eternal life. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel.
Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the truth, faith, we pray, O Lord, so that confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his resurrection, merit to attain eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Following the blessing and dismissal, we will make our way to the Holy House of England's Nazareth, there to commemorate and celebrate the Annunciation and to offer our prayer and intercession uh, through Mary to the Lord our God, made man in Jesus Christ. And so we will face the Holy House for that devotion uh, as we sing the Regina Chaley. And, uh, and I wish you and all your loved ones a very happy feast day on this solemnity of the Annunciation of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the Father who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world shed that love upon you, his children. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the mother of God, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia. For the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Let us pray, O God, who by the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has brought joy to the whole world. Grant that through the intercession of his mother, the Virgin Mary, our Lady of Walsingham, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. (coughs) 